So I'm re-releasing this next video because it contains some exclusive footage that I'm sure will be of interest to the ethno-nationalists. And also the fact that I'm now regarded by them with such high esteem, hopefully they might also be inclined to watch some of my other content. Like I say, this is one of my first videos, so I completely apologise for the poor sound quality. Although I have updated the edit to reflect the pathological behaviours highlighted in my last video. Enjoy! I can't believe that happy guy has got him nailed, like... And well, he's, like... Getting, he's getting beaten by what looks like a leftist right now. Oh, 100%, just... yeah. Is that Swampy? Guy. Is that Swampy from the good old... Uh, well, what well, if it, I'd love if to know it is, Swampy. <laughs> if it is, then Swampy's a hero. And, and you didn't ensure that this man faced justice for I, I, did, what I, did, I, did, I did what I think is responsible. I don't know what happened to him. Well, you should... Well, well you don't even care. Hmm. Like, that, that left him really know. as a hero. That, well, I, I, I hope, don't know what happened I hope the PA... I hope the PA member that's assigned to us tonight has fucking watched that and realised the man yeah. they're fucking defending when they're writing their fucking notes down. I'm not going to build my law, but thank you, but it's at the end of that point. You would be, I thought we wanted it, to talk about something. It, 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 it just wants to move on. The police said yeah. yeah. about this story. Yeah, I think we so, the they, hmm. they, they would question you and say, why didn't you come to the police? And you would, you this guy's a fucking hero. I love this guy. guy. Hello, welcome to my voice. My name is Lister and I will be your host for the next 30 minutes or so. This video is going to focus on a controversial figure who frequents Speaker's Corner, goes by the name of Ralph Masalamani. He's kind of new to the scene and he seems to attract a very diverse opinion of himself from others. From people claiming he's the next messiah to others believing he could be an undercover agent. I think he's dangerous, and this video or two will aim to explain why I think that is. I would, I would, I would string you up in a prison and desensitize you. This video will be one long game of but she said, but no, she no, no, said. No. Thank you Ralph I'm going to try and figure out the truth behind Ralph Masalamani Deception using only his words I'm not trying to deny any words I've said on video camera That would be absurd Ralph slow down, you're getting ahead of yourself now, If you've not met Ralph He describes himself as a neo-reactionary Further right than a fascist I'm just going to give you a few examples Of some of the things he says Give you a bit of a flavour of the kind of guy he is. You will spread <laughs> mysteries to suit your agenda. Our agenda. Exactly. So, so does that mean that you're willing to misrepresent right. the other side to win the war? We believe we're it's morally, a direct question. We're morally right. It's a direct, direct Absolutely. question. Absolutely. So I, you're I will, willing to misrepresent. I would, I would, I would string you up in a prison and desensitize you. Yeah. I had power. Yeah. You know words. You know words have power, right? Absolutely. And the way it's framed as a Muslim, that's very, very specific. Correct. And you knew that on purpose. Oh, we're to doing create, it deliberately too. You are doing deliberately. No, because we're doing exactly. war with so Islam. They're right? doing it deliberately. Because we're right, part, sort, of, yeah, part of the war Thank you. I'm glad you've admitted. Okay, no, so I don't know if ever we're using it you, like you, you, Goebbels you, you, with for propaganda. So, ah, so you, you, Goebbels, who was, who was Goebbels? A no, Nazi. Hitler's, Hitler's, so, so, oh, so you're so using, using it like a Nazi. Yeah, just like a, just like, right. just like a Mullah Goebbels would do. Goebbels was a... Hail Boris. You will... Now you're probably instantly thinking this guy seems crazy and he shouldn't be taken seriously and I would have to agree but the problem is people do take him seriously especially his disciples that he always seems to have hanging around so we know Ralph lies the question is how much and what is true and what is not 
So 90% of what they're saying is bollocks, but I'm looking for that 10%. Good idea, Ralph. So now let's go get some of his inconsistencies, or in Ralph's words, the 90%, which is bollocks. But I know I'm not inconsistent. What I don't understand is which bit you think is inconsistent. So this video will focus around a story Ralph told on a live streamed hangout about his direct knowledge of grooming gangs, and he told this anecdotal story to try and show his dominance in knowledge on this subject. I'm going to show that video in full now. So what do they tell you about grooming gangs, Ralph? Yeah, the, the, no, Ralph is right. Ralph is right on this. Is, the point here is, and it's building on Raindrop's point, is Raindrop's point is dead on the money. They have three different axes operating in their life. They are frustrated young men. They're waiting to go to a traditional conservative marriage. They are sexualized with no, no access to their own women. And they've used the correlate perfectly to grooming gangs as we will either fuck and dump or break and rape young, filthy, white women. They can't say that to you, Dan. I hear it all the time. If I solicit it, they're open with me. If I pretend I agree with it, they tell me even more. I've had boys saying, hey, there's a house, there's, there's a house with a no, young no, girl. Hear me out, Dan. The audience want to listen to me too. I literally don't. I've, mate, I've, I've got the audience. I've given you so some important chances, Dan. No, that is it's true, Dan. Oh, you were Unfortunately, it is true. The audience like want to listen to your joke. They want to hear about the real stories. So, for example, recently, where I spoke to some of the boys, they're 24, they're like, hey, we found a new Polish girl. She's now totally hooked on a bit of chalk. If you go to her house, she's managed to fuck them. Do you want to come? Do you want to go? We keep going there. Did their you attitude, report them to the police? Their attitude to Western... Did you report them to the police? I'm going to ask you once again to calm this down. I'm asking four or five times at being reasonable. You will, I did not interrupt you. You will take your turn or you will get kicked off. Now, so the audience are trying to listen to what I have to say. So in these areas, when you listen to their attitudes, you can see them starting at the young incels that you identify, gaining in cultural confidence before marriage. Eventually, when they get married, they become a different type of creature. And on that period, their attitudes to women, as Raindrop says, is a derisory attitude. It's a cultural hegemonistic attitude. It's one that says, I will fucking use this piece of meat. And that is what the attitude of Muslim boys in England are to white men. The fact that you're not privy to this doesn't mean it isn't so. It just means you're not privy to it because you can't relate to the culture. Raindrop, I would pause it, even as a Sikh man, they would be more likely to share that with you with Dan, correct? Babbling and you're babbling. So with this video, I just want you to notice how dominant and sure of himself he is in, in, in his storytelling. There's no doubt in his mind that what he's saying is true. He's very authoritative. There's no, oh, it's just hearsay. Oh, I don't know if there's a victim. It's he knows what is happening. There's no other way to take that. So I had that chat and decided to question Ralph on what he had said at Speaker's Corner and he kind of wiggled out of the conversation while lying, contradicting himself. So I knew there was a lie there, but I just needed to confirm it. So I, I let him squirm out the conversation and then had a Google Hangout with him while I questioned him more and played him that original video back to him after he'd kind of dropped himself in it. So that's all the material I'm, I'm taking from and I'm going to show the contradictions from within those three discussions that I've had with him and that I'm aware of. Okay. Which bit do you think is inconsistent? It's a genuine sincere question, mate. So inconsistency number one. He mentioned house at least twice in that original clip. And let's see what he had to say about the house the first time I spoke to him. Yet there is a story that you told where you were uh, having a chat with a Muslim and he invited you to this house Not to have house, a go to, okay, there's a location. Your narrative is let's try, 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 try to find Ralph's inconsistency. I'm trying to help you understand, but there isn't one. So as we can see, this is the first question I ask him, and he instantly distances himself from the original story. First he was told about a house, and now it's not a house, it's just a location. Why the change? Has he got something to hide? Let's continue our investigation. You see, your response tells me you're trying to find inconsistency. Yes, Ralph, I am trying to find inconsistencies. How the hell did you get in here? 
So in the original clip that I just showed, Ralph is quite explicit that the guy told him that they had this woman in this house. And it wasn't hearsay. But then let's see what he says later on after he realises he needs to crawl back into ignorance. And I became made aware through the hearsay of the community that this thing was occurring. Let's start again. I knew something was occurring. I was concerned about what was occurring. I've never witnessed this. I don't know. I've never been there. It's just hearsay amongst the people I know. Which bit of which story have I changed? And even when he's saying that it's hearsay, he's still got this positive, I knew something was occurring. Like it's not just hearsay, it's almost definite that he knows this is happening. Another positive language was he, he kept saying he had stopped. And I, I spent about half an hour pressing him on how can something stop if it hadn't started or if you don't know it had started. And I was asking him this question linguistically, but he kept going on repeating the same question and not answering how something could stop unless it started. The concern is stopping it. I wanted it stopped. That was my objective. My intention was to have it stopped. So I went to their right-wing hierarchy, and that's what stopped it. They would have jammed up for the police. Which bit did I say before that I had changed? Just wait, Ralph. It's only going to get better. These last two examples are very telling. I'll explain after each one. You had been told it had stopped. How can it have stopped if you don't know it, if whether it had started or not? Okay, so let's, let's break that down logically. Either two scenarios. Either it never happened, or it did happen. Of course there's two scenarios, either it happened or it didn't happen. And considering it had stopped, it must have happened. And then yes, this last one is even more telling. Let's go. The best way to find a stop in these families, in these communities, is to find the male patriarch who has the power. Because only he can make them stop. So I went to the male patriarch and told them that if they didn't stop it, I would stop it. And then it stopped. And okay. the boys involved, the boys involved won't even make eye contact with me when they pass me in the street. But they've not faced justice for their crimes. Well, I don't know if there was a crime. But you, don't, but you said it stopped. So how do you know it stopped if stopped. you don't know if there was something to stop? Because the father told me. I asked him, how do you know that it stopped? And then he says, because the father told him. So if the father told you it stopped, then it's very likely there's a crime committed. Come on, Ralph. Which bit of which story have I changed? And then later on, he eventually, I think, realizes his predicament and changes his story once more into this. Hey, so earlier, yeah. you said that the father told you it had stopped. Mm -hmm. Well, so it, I asked you. He didn't say stop. His exact language in, in his exact language was it won't, it, you know, you don't have to worry about, or something equivalent to you don't worry about it anymore. It sounds I, I to me. Word for it, you need to be a bit more precise in your language. So there you have it. He's finally climbed down from using the word stopped. The father told him it had stopped to his exact language was words to the effect of. No, that's a lie, Ralph, because you are literally just making that up on the spot right now. I have no inconsistency inside, so it's easy for me. Which moves us on to the fact that he tried to not talk about it. He, and he used numerous tactics to make this happen, from talking over me to directly saying, should we talk about something else? But saying, is that over then? There was a lot of nervous laughing. And even the comments underneath the video, they're not very favorable to him. They're all saying, Ralph, you're done. <laughs> So I can imagine he was a bit nervous throughout the, these conversations that I had with him. I'll give you a few examples of those, this nervousness now. I wasn't witness to a crime. So are we done with this then? Is that the end of that? So that comment was made for half an hour into the conversation where we're clearly not done. And it went on for like another half an hour, 40 minutes more. But here's another one. Well, you should have told the police, yes, do you not think? Uh, if you're aware of a crime, question. you should, otherwise you thank, are complicit. Thank you, thank you for the input. Is that the end of that matter? 
Yeah. I'm not compelled by law, but thank you for it. the end of that point. Yeah. You would be, I thought we wanted to talk about something more. Think about if, if, the if, if, if the police, yeah. if the police okay, heard about yeah. this story, yeah, I think we get so the point. They, they, they would question you and say, why didn't you come to the police? Uh, and you would, Her Majesty's police are willing to come to the police. When was this incident? When was this incident? When was this? So are you going to go to the police? Well, even if I did, it's not. I don't give you the right to ask me what and tell me what to do. I don't need the right. I'm making the point. I'm actually telling you I'm not giving you the right. So you can ask me nicely, right? But you're not going to tell me what to do. If we tie it in the right, we try and tie this. One great thing about the far right is we don't negotiate. So we're carrying on. So that point's over. I think we want to talk about it. Oh no, no, just to tie it up. I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. Because you have to hurry up. You're going to get bored. I think you're stuck. That's more like your business. He's got you. You're a bit stuck, and you're getting. You're using boredom as an excuse. I just a bit so, uh, yeah. uh, I see some sweat. I see some sweat. <laughs> That's just my beautiful. You want to run your fingers in my shit. Uh, that really happens don't. all the time. Humility. It's actually a booming guy. Which one do you want to talk about? Do you want to finish your point? Take, take uh, I want to get on to Muslim. The Muslim booming guy. Yeah, I just want to see him. Uh, I want to know. So I let him off there. I sensed he was lying and being deceptive. So I thought I'd go back, review the footage, check what he was lying about, and then question him again on camera. So then I've got three things to work on and then to make this video. So there was one more like act of nervousness or sheepishness that I almost forgot to include. And that's his admission that it was like part of a family, his family or someone else's family. He clarified later that it was someone else's family. But look how he makes this announcement that it's family it's not as if he's proud of it he does it very hush hush and he says it to the muslim as if he's expecting him to understand why he's kept it within the family and not gone to the police you know if the police were but eventually again, in court i don't think this is a story we should discuss about. why not well, you brought it up. If, it, if we, you knew about something, we shouldn't have discussed it. Why? Why? Why, why did you bring it up online? I don't discuss it's real people involved. No, there's no problem. I think it does both sides a disservice. No, it's already I, happened, I, right? No, but, but you're, 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 you're complicit. Happy to talk about it. Yeah, you're blaming me. Happy to talk about it. You're blaming me. So you were a complicit. If you know of a crime, when you knew of a crime and you didn't even tell the police, you don't report it. You said that you did it. So as you can see there, he whispers as if to move away from the camera to Saracen and says, oh, it's family, it's family. And then I pick him up on it instantly and then he has to admit and, and talk about the fact that it's family and who's family. But then let's see how he characterizes that on the YouTube hangout when I question him about why he whispered. Okay, so you said at the park that it's within the, it's within, I don't want to talk about this, and then you, under your breath, you said it's within the family, and then I responded, oh, it's it wasn't within under my breath, it was just windy. I mean, that was a blatant lie. I'm going to play that again, so you can see for yourselves. You said that you did it. Now, his final contradiction that I'm going to include is a big one. He has gone through the whole conversation saying that he told the father he thought that was the right thing to do because he put a stop to it. The police wouldn't do anything about it if, if he was to tell them. And he didn't even know if there was a crime. It's just hearsay or whatever. But he doesn't know if there is a victim. There could have been a victim. And if there was, she's probably still being groomed by the other members of the grooming gang. So anyway, I left the conversation and they continued to talk about it and Ralph took up most of the time in the next 10 minutes with a nervous tone, nervous laughter. I would absolutely recommend listening to that last 10 minutes. The way he's just nervously laughing, it's so cringeworthy. It sounds like he just wants to crawl up and die. Go listen to it. And then he puts the biggest contradiction in that you could ever imagine. Uh, remember, he's told the father what his sons were doing. And then let's hear what he has to say, what he thinks the punishment should be for groomers and their associates. But anyways, moving on. Um, you know how I feel about grooming gangs. My, clear, my fucking opinions are quite clear in the public. I'll tell you what should happen to all grooming gangs, regardless of who they are and what religion or people you feel. It's a fucking bullet straight to the head. Yeah, I deport their families. I agree, I agree. Yeah, deport their families and everyone in you. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Deport their families and everybody that knew them. So Ralph, deport yourself. Get out of here. You're gone. Your own rules. You knew a groomer. Get out. So are we done with this then? Is that the end of that? I would I would I would string you up in a prison and desensitize you. I'd bow and